President Biden earlier this week, refusing to answer questions from an increasingly frustrated White House press corps regarding his own ongoing classified document scandal. This week, we learned that the FBI chose not to supervise the search for classified documents in Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home. Justice Department officials reportedly believed that the oversight would, quote, complicate later stages of its investigation and that supervision wouldn't be needed given the president's willingness to cooperate. Republican leaders are calling for a deeper investigation into the Penn Biden Center and the document scandal, as well as the border. Here to discuss the new chairman of the House Oversight and Accountability Committee, Kentucky Congressman James Comer. Congressman Comer, thank you so much for making time for us this weekend. My pleasure. So I, I want to get to the document scandal, but first... Uh, the border, you certainly have your work cut out for you there. You've announced that you will hold a border crisis hearing on the president's policies that many people believe are fueling illegal immigration. Uh, Congressman, how do you hope to advance the conversation and advance some reform and resolution to a crisis with that hearing and your committee's work? Well, we want to start with people on the ground. Uh, these are the frontline workers who are having to deal with this every day. They need to be heard. Uh, they've not been allowed to conduct interviews. Uh, they're, in fact, as we speak, being discouraged from coming before our committee. But I think the American people need to know what's really going on at the border. Uh, a lot of people, for better or worse, don't have a lot of confidence in some of the media reports that are being played out. Uh, then we know the, the Secretary Mayorkas is saying that the border is secure. So I don't think people really understand the severity of what's going on at the border. They certainly don't understand what this is costing the American taxpayers. So we want to try to start the first steps of uh, letting the American people hear a firsthand account from the people on the front lines what's really going on at the southern border. All right, on to the document scandal, Congressman. There are a lot of unanswered questions here, obviously. But first, does it strike you as suspicious that a vice president, less than five days before he leaves office, when he should be taking departure photos and thanking his staff, gets on Air Force Two and flies to Ukraine and then flies to go meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping, two countries his son has business dealings with, and, and will you be looking into that trip as part of a broader investigation here? Absolutely. And it's very suspicious that he would do that. You know, you have to go back to that time period. The odds of Joe Biden ever returning to politics were probably slim to none at his age. And the, the fact that, uh, you know, the odds were very slim that he would be the Democrat nominee, much less the, the president of the United States of America. So at that point in his career, at that point in his life, you know, he was probably looking uh, to how to maximize his value in the private sector. And there's nothing wrong with that, except when you do it uh, with the taxpayer dollars. And, and now that he's president, you know, this comes back into focus. We're investigating this family for influence peddling. There's no question they've influenced peddled for decades. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, why was Ukraine willing to pay Hunter Biden that much money? Why is China investing so many millions of dollars into Hunter's shady business dealings and into the Biden Center for Diplomacy? Yeah. You would think that they're wanting a return on their investment. So this trip could be part of that return on the investment. We have to uh, investigate this. Again, he was using taxpayer dollars and, and government resources to set these meetings up. We need to know exactly what went on and if this has contributed to the influence peddling and if this, in fact, has compromised this administration. Uh, we now know that the FBI chose not to be involved with the search and allowed the president's lawyers to handle the search for the documents. Is that patent evidence of special treatment being given to this White House? I don't think even the most partisan liberals would agree that that passes the smell test. I mean, the way that former President Trump was treated with a SWAT team going in to raid his, his home, uh, to take the security cameras, to go through his wife's closet, his son's bedroom, and then see that uh, Joe Biden did the same and probably worse because he had classified documents in various locations. Right. And they're not even sending the FBI over there, and they're letting his personal attorney, attorneys who do not have national security clearance to go through and search for documents. 
and more than likely clean up uh, any mess or evidence. I mean, this is wrong. This is another example of a two-tier system of justice. Mm -hmm. And this is why we are doing this uh, task force, this new select committee on the weaponization of the DOJ. Uh, I want to discuss the Penn Biden Center. You brought it up a couple of minutes ago. The university says no money from communist China ever went to the center. <clears throat> but we all know that money is fungible. And uh, th the facts are that the contributions seem to have more than doubled after the center was established. What are you looking for there? Well, we want to see if there's a, a pattern here. We want to know exactly who's donating this money. If we can determine who the anonymous donors are, I mean, that's something that should be a uh, concern to everyone. And look, University of Pennsylvania, they're going to have a lot of explaining to do. Whether they like it or not, they've been drug into this because of the massive amount of Chinese money they've received. And then the fact that we learned the former president of the University of Pennsylvania, who's now the ambassador to Germany, was uh, successful in lobbying the FBI to drop their China initiative, which everyone knows China's infiltrated our research universities with Chinese spies right. and the fact that Pennsylvania led the uh, effort to drop that investigation on the basis of it being racist would be very concerning because, again, you have to ask yourselves with all this money, what is China trying to get out of it? And if they got, if they were successful in getting the University of Pennsylvania to drop that initiative, well, I'd say they got a pretty good return on their investment because who knows how much technology uh, how many patents, how much intellectual property they've stolen since that initiative was dropped. Mm. I, I want to go back to something you talked about, the, 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 the two-tiered justice system uh, or special treatment. Um, Hunter Biden, you've asked the Treasury Department to provide information on Hunter Biden's suspicious activity reports. Have you received any information? And do you expect that uh, you will at all be treated the same way they treated uh, the Democrats when, when they chaired the committee? Unfortunately, we have not heard back from Secretary Yellen. The last time she responded to our request, she said she couldn't uh, give us those documents because I was in the minority. Well, we sent her a letter uh, when we became the majority, when I'm officially uh, took the, the reins as chairman of the committee, reminded her that I'm now the chairman of the committee and uh, re-asked for the documents. So unfortunately, we haven't heard anything back from her. I'm confident I'll get those documents one way or the other. Either she can do what uh, every presidential administration has done in the past and provided the documents to the Oversight Committee, or we'll get them from the banks. One way or the other, we're going to get them. But you know, it sure looks bad that they're doing everything they can to obstruct our investigation when the president has always been there for the administration to turn those documents over to the chairman of the House Oversight Committee. President Biden, a congressman, has spent nearly 200 days in Delaware since taking office. We've been told repeatedly no visitor logs or schedules would be made available when he is there. Uh, now it appears that the Secret Service will release some, some semblance of a visitor log. The president is always the president, whether it's Trump at Mar-a-Lago or in Bedminster or Biden in Wilmington or St. Croix. Is it time for a policy to have complete public logs for all residences and all places where the president is staying? Absolutely. And I think at the end of all of these investigations we're doing, there's hopefully going to be a bipartisan legislative fix. I think everyone would agree it's of the utmost importance to keep records as to who interacts with the president of the United States. That should be uh, public information. That should be information to retain for national security purposes. So this is going to be one of many reforms that you're going to see passed eventually out of a Republican Congress to address the many ethics violations and many lapses in judgment of the current Biden administration. Congressman, uh, real quick, uh, last question for you. You know, Americans, they watch the January 6 hearings, the Russia hoax hearings, so many others over the years that generated a lot of political theater, but little in the way of results. What do you say to Americans who believe that these investigations are a waste of time? Well, look, I, there's no question. I'm walking into a situation here where congressional oversight uh, has a very low opinion rating among people in both parties. I blame Adam Schiff for a lot of that, but in reality, it, both parties are to blame because, as you've mentioned, so many of these high-profile investigations never amount to anything. My goal is, at the end, you know, that not only we answer the questions we have. First question was: Was Joe Biden uh, involved in his son's shady business dealings? And second question: Did he benefit directly 
from those shady business dealings. And last question, is America compromised because of his family's influence peddling? Mm. And at the end, we're going to have a legislative fix because the Democrats tried to cry foul and say that, that Trump had some uh, concerns with his son-in-law. We're going to fix it to where we know what is allowable and what is not allowable, so mm -hmm. there's no question. And then increase the transparency laws and disclosure laws for any type of immediate family members who are doing business with our adversaries. So I yeah. feel like at the end of the day, we're going to have something substantive come from this investigation. And, and, and fix it on a bipartisan basis. Absolutely. Uh, Chairman of the House Oversight and Accountability Committee, James Comer. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.